Good morning, students! This is Rafi G. Aguilar, your teachers in the disciplines and ideas in the social sciences. Today, we have a new lesson, our last lesson for the first quarter. But before we proceed, don't forget to visit our official website at guidef.sims.school/lcms. I repeat, guidef.sims.school/lcms. Don't forget to log in your account there and visit to the learning path. Answer the activities I have uploaded there as well as the quizzes and the exams. So that's all. Shall we proceed now? We shall. Okay. Our lesson for this morning is all about the basic concepts and principles of institutionalism. So this will be the end of our first quarter. The last topic of the first quarter. The basic concepts and principles of institutionalism. Now, before we begin with our discussions, do you have any idea about the basic concepts and principles of institutionalism? What is institutionalism? Okay, we'll find out what is it all about. But before that, I have prepared our objectives for this morning. So, this will be the objectives. First, Understand the basic concepts and principles of institutionalism. So we are going to understand understand the basic concepts and principles of institutionalism. What is this institutionalism all about? Why do we need to understand the basic concepts and principles? Second, examine the constitutive nature of formal and informal institutions. Now, after understanding the basic concept, we have to examine the, constitu the constitutive nature of formal and informal institutions. What is informal and what is formal institutions? Next, interpret personal and social experiences relating to constraints, social behavior. So, first, we have to understand, second, examine, and then third, interpret. So, this will be the objectives for this morning. Now, we will begin our discussion. And now, based on the image shown, do you have any idea about, about the picture shown? How about this one? So, all these images has something to do with our lesson for this morning. And that's all. The institutionalism. Okay, so again, our topic for this morning is all about institutionalism. So what is institutionalism? Institutionalism is an approach aligned to methods and approaches in political and science, in political science that has significance in society. So it is an approach or the, uh, to align to methods in political science that has significance in society. Significance has is, uh, significance means important, no? So, significance in society. This implied as the regulations, orders, and systems. The aforesaid approaches varies mostly in the interpretation of institutions, in their subject, logic of motive, and in the ideas they accord with development. Through this, institutions can be explained as any formal management set up and designed to emulate behavior, function, and regulation. Behavior, what are the attitudes no? that being shown? Functions, what are the purposes? What are their purposes? What are their rules? What can, uh, what, how, how are they going to contribute? And Regulation. This would be the rules that they followed. So that is, uh, those are the, uh, the the design to emulate the behavior, the function, as well as the regulation. So question. Okay, none. 
According to North 1990, institution is any kind of constraints that may that man made to form action. So it is a constraint that man made to form actions. This may relate formal constraints like regulation or informal constraints like practice, standard, or label of behavior. While Hall 1986 explained that institutions as the formal regulation, conformity, operation, and standard operational practices that constitution the, uh, the relation of persons in different areas in the civil order and economy. Likewise, March and Olsen 1989 stressed that the primary effect of institutions in political affairs based from the reality that they are accumula accumulation of interconnected regulation and procedure that determine right actions in dealings of functions and institutions. So that's according to them. So according to North, in the year 1990, institution is a kind of constraint that man made to, to form action. While Paul, in the year 1986, explained that institution as the formal regulation, conformity, operation, and standard operational practices. And likewise, March and Olsen in the year 1989 stressed the prim primary effect of institution in political affairs based from the reality that they are accumul accumulation of interconnected regulation and procedure and that determine right actions in the links of functions and situations. So it's more about functions and situation. That's according to March and Olsen. So question. The origin of this approach rested on the idea of organization and legitimacy. So that's uh, we are talking about institution. Thus, institutionalized position of political agreement with party scam, the regulation of elected competition, like um, governing bureaucracies, legislative body, judiciary system, and big institutionalized structure composed of the government, social institutions, and public institutions, necessary organi organization, especially in political attribute. So it's more on uh, ruling the uh, ruling the uh, society or a place or etc. But uh, they have a political agreement with party scheme, uh, the regulation of elected competitions like um, elected from president down uh, from vice president, secretary, or etc. Institutionalism is an approach used in governing body and social science. So, governing body and social science. So, according to William Robson in the year 1975, explained that this approach is institutional as it gathered focus on the government involved in public administration, examined functions, structures, account, and relations. It communicates how they function and the level of strength they accomplish. Now, what can you say about this image? So, it's a poor man. Maybe he's holding his wallet or um, something like uh, something inside his uh, hand. Uh, he's holding something in his hand and maybe he doesn't have money or he's poor to be specific. How about this image? So the image shows um, uh, they are having a meeting or an interview or something. So that involves um, gathering information um, or maybe for statistical purposes. So it depends. So now this is called as the formal and informal institutions. Now, let's talk about the formal and informal institutions. So, since we've discussed already, what is institution, 
right? Okay, now let's proceed to the formal and informal institutions. Institutions can also be explained as any formal or informal management setup and designed to emulate behavior, function, and regulation that constrains to human actions. So it can be explained as formal and informal management setup. So that is institution. Now what is formal? Okay. Formal institutions are institutions that are officially established in one way or another. So, one way or another. Officially established in one way or another. That is formal. The government itself is an example and other government agencies, the national and local government laws, rules, and regulations. So, those are called as the formal institution one way or another the government itself or the uh, is the uh, is an example of formal institution they are um and other government agencies so government agencies what are those um let's say the dole the department of labor industry uh labor and employment and then the what else? Uh, the DNR. The so there are many institutions. I mean, the government agencies covered by the government. So that uh, those are called as the formal institutions. So it comes with the government laws, the the rules, and the regulations. So other examples of formal institutions are business corporations labor unions, and religious organizations. So, those are what we call as the formal institutions. Next is the informal institutions are not officially established. So, this is opposite with the formal institution. Because when we are talking about formal institutions, these are the established, not officially established while the informal are not officially established. So that's the difference between the two. But are commonly accepted throughout society like practices. So practices, yung mga nakasanaya nila. Standard or label of behavior. So how they will, how we, how, we, how will they act on a, first, uh, on a specific society. So this apply to all types of activities such as social, cultural, political, and economic. Some examples are pamamantikan for courtship and in arranged marriage. So those are informal. These informal institutions are tied with the social norms, beliefs, and practices of certain groups of people or society. So that's why uh, when talk talking about formal institution, uh, having a um, Marriage, okay, formal marriage. So that's one of the uh, formal institutions. Why? Because the government allowed them to get married on the church. And as well, uh, on that, they have certain papers to, to be filled up. And after that, it's called formal institution because aside from, the, aside from church, um, they have also... Uh, the West called as the West marriage, wherein they can, they can, uh, they will, uh, they are allowed to get married in front of the mayor. So that is formal institution. So it's uh, in line with the government rules and the regulations or the laws. While informal, so this believe as the practices, no, the standards or label or label of behavior like. Uh, cultural, political, and economic. Example for that is pamamanhikan. So pamamanhikan that is the uh, that is informal institutions because pamamanhikan is an act of courtship, right? And as well as nakasanayan. Uh, so that is what we call as practices nakasanayan or uh, it's part of the Filipino culture wherein man. Uh, will undergo pamamantikan if he is interested or in love with the girl she loves, she admires. I, she, he loves, sorry, he loves or 
he admires. So something like that. So that is informal institution and arranged marriage. So arranged marriage, um, it can be applied to uh, any any tribes or uh, yes, any tribes. Um, it is informal institution because it it, it uh, this kind of practices uh, were believe uh, are believed of. Uh, um, it does not. Uh, covered with the government laws, so it's their practices, it's their own beliefs, something like that. So that is a uh, informal institution, and these informal institutions are tied with social norms, beliefs, and practices of certain groups of people or society. So it uh, tied with social norms. Uh, where the uh, where the uh, you belong? Um, what are your beliefs? and practices of certain groups of people or society like um, in any tribes they have their own beliefs they have their own practices so that is informal institutions so that's the difference between formal and informal institutions so again formal institutions these are officially established uh, one way or another that is formal while informal institution, this is uh, this is not officially established. Therefore, this can be performed because of the uh, social norms. Well, it could be political, cultural. Uh, most of the that is cultural and of course economic. So example of that is pamamanhikan. So that is the uh, those are the difference between the formal institution and the informal institution. So, so much for that. Do you have any questions before we proceed? None. Okay. Remember, institutionalism is an approach. It is an approach. Okay, remember that. Aligned to methods and approaches in political science that have significance in society implied as the regulations, orders, and systems. This may relate formal constraints like regulation or informal constraints like practice, standards, or label of behavior. So, formal constraints like regulation, so these are the rules and regulations or the laws to be followed by a certain society or a certain country. Like here in the Philippines, we have, uh, like here in the, the Republic of the Philippines, so we are intended to obey the rules and regulations of the Republic of the Philippines. And of course, this may relate to formal constraints like regulation, so the one that I'm talking about earlier, and then the informal constraints like the practices, so the practices of like cultural, so what are the practices like, atong, uh, like the arranged marriage, so those are the practices, or the standard or label, label of behavior. Public institutions, so what is public institutions are necessary organizations especially in political attribute so political attribute attribute thus an institutionalized position of political agreement with party scheme the regulation of elected competition governing bureaucracies legislative body judiciary system and big institutionalized structure composed of the governmental and the social institutions so that is public institutions. Next, the formal institutions are officially established. Always remember that. The government itself is an example and other government agencies, the national and local government laws, rules, and regulations. And last but not least is the informal institution. Are not officially established but commonly accepted throughout society like practices, standards, or label of behavior. So that is informal institution. So again, institutionalism is an approach aligned to methods and approaches in political science. Well, the public institutions are necessary organizations. So public institutions are necessary organizations. So those are uh, public institutions are organization organizations so political attribute um yes then uh 
institutionalism can be defined in both formal and informal institutions. So, what is formal institutions? Again, formal institutions are officially established. So, example of this are the, uh, the government itself, right? So, in line with the rules and regulations, the policies, the laws. So, those are the formal institutions. And the informal institutions are not officially established but commonly accepted throughout society. So, what are those? Like practices. So, there mga nakasanayan. That those are practices like pamamantikan, um, especially uh, as well as the superstitious beliefs, no? And standard or label of behavior. So, those are informal institutions. So again, institutionalism, and that can be defined into formal and informal institutions. And public institutions are the, what? The organizations. So, next is the concepts and principles of feminist theory. So, do you have any idea about the concepts and principles of feminist theory? So, I have also prepared our objectives for this lesson. First, understand the concept and principles of feminist theory. So, we are going to understand the concepts and principles of feminist theory. Second, analyze the relationship between gender ideology and gender inequality. So, gender, so it talks about the sex, uh, male or female, ideology. When I say ideology, this is the belief, no? or uh, yes, the belief, that is ideology. And last but not the least is the uh, interpret personal and social experiences relating to feminist theory. So we are going to understand, analyze, and interpret the basic concept of feminist theory. So more on talking about gender and from the word itself, feminine, so it's somehow uh, dominant by female let's see okay so on the image shown we can do it so it's like uh, women can do what men can do right okay so this is feminism not feminism is the radical notion that women are people so that's feminism okay the feminist feminism primarily is a western notion women's presence is perceived over men viewpoint consequently women are measured as inferior when i say inferior this is um uh, measured as inferior so, women were forced to do their traditional duty, like being housewives and not given the right to education and other legal rights. I mean, legal rights. Okay. So, that is feminism. So, women's presence is perceived over men's viewpoint. Meaning, uh, they are, uh, men are less, are less, are lesser compared to men. Because, uh, way back before, um, uh, uh, where politics or any kinds of um, thing, uh, men are dominant compared to the women because they believe that women are their partners in life, but they are not. Uh, they are not what they call this. They they they, uh, they have their own perceptions that women doesn't have. Uh, the power to rule a certain society or a certain uh, like in any in any field so they have they, uh, they doesn't have the right to rule or to lead but in today's generation uh, we are accepting and uh, we are accept, uh, accepting them that women can also lead the society so women were forced to do their traditional duties. So what are their traditional duties? Like they are going, uh, they are uh, staying home, uh, preparing for their husbands, uh, foods, 
uh, serving their husband as well as their children. So uh, that's all the the traditional duty of a woman. A woman. So Deborah Madsen stated, feminism stands for women's status in society and demands about gender consciousness and oppression. So feminine stands for women's status. The concern of feminist theory are the description of gender that founds and dominates women and the basis of women's freedom from those constraints. Feminism Im, uh, emanates its exist existence for the fight for women's right counter to the prejudice existing in the society. Feminism implicates two key phases, facets of rational obligation and political undertaking that brought justice for women put an end to, ex to sexism all time in all The first wave of feminism highlighted many issues associated to women such as marriage, property rights, and right to vote. The two foundations linked to this are the women's rights and women's suffrage. So, the two foundations, the women's rights and the women's suffrage. So, that is uh, the women's right uh, in any, like, uh, property rights. And of course, the women's suffrage or the women's right to vote. This contains matters such as equal salaries for women, right to educational, right to vote, and other legal rights like the institution of marriage. It also focused on issues concerned to women like reproductive rights and sexuality. The first wave feminism stressed equal opportunity for women in the society. So that's the first wave feminism. Stress equal opportunity for women in the society. Further, the first wave of feminism granted rights to suffrage for most women in the early 20th century. Among these feminists who founded contemporary feminism were Elizabeth Robbins, Dorothy Richardson, Catherine Mansfield, and Virginia Woolf. So they are uh, the contemporary, uh, founded contemporary of feminism. The second wave of feminism began in 1960s. It stressed so social, cultural, and political inequality to women in the society. That is the second wave. So this wave in feminism revealed the first groups of feminism based on women's practices and stance. It comprised vigorous involvement of women economically ahead of World War II. This period was the beginning of women education and women involvement on civil rights and radical issues attached to young women culture change. It made women aware of sexual discrimination which led to resistance. Therefore, sexual liberation and production, reproduction rights of women became fundamental issues. So that's uh, under the second wave of feminism. The third wave of feminism or post-feminism also started in the 1960s and flourished in the 21st century. It looked into the relation of language and gender. It also tackled issues attached to discrimination of women in the publication arena and covered the facets of multiculturalism and competition. It contested the dominating sort of white feminism has a strong message concerning several conceptions of awareness in the society. It was a protest which happened in the 1980s that lifted the issues like class, race, culture, and sexuality that explicated, explicated numerous identities of women. So that is the third wave feminism. So more on... Um, Issues like class, race, culture, and sexuality that explicit numerous identities of the women. So types of feminist movements. What are those types of feminist movements? Okay, so advocates, liberal feminism, uh, the ad advocacy, female education, and equal opportunities from the 18th century to 19th century, Mary Wollst uh, Wollstonecraft, John Stuart Mill, and Simon de Beauvoir. So, female educate advocacy, female education, and equal opportunities, political and legal, uh, legal equality among men and women, such as reproductive rights to women, voting, equal wages, and healthcare. Aside from that, 
gender equality, equal rights regarding legal matters, education, and work opportunities. Next, uh, under liberal feminism is the li li libertarian feminism. So, advocacy, e equality in property distribution between men and women, freedom for conscience and expression such as women's sexual and domestic violence, and the right to compensation when someone violates the rights. So, that is the uh, libertarian feminism. So, under li liberal feminism, again, is the egalitarian liberal feminism. So, what is this? Uh, what's the advocacy? So, freedom to choose personal autonomy, such as understand their social status, acquire personal and self-governing elements of women. So, that is, uh, those are the, uh, under the liberal feminism. Next of advocates is the socialist feminist. So, advocacy, private and public aspects of women were given focus. Liberation cannot be achieved unless the economic and cultural sources of women oppressions end. And then the third is the anarchy feminism. So 19th century to 20th century. So Emma Goldman, Voltairine B, and Claire and Lousy Parson. So advocacy resist patriarchy, patriarchy uh, state power, and class divisions. The independence of woman, right to support herself, to live for herself, to love whomever she likes. And then freedom for both sexes, freedom of action, freedom in love, freedom in motherhood. So that's under anarchy feminism. Under the advocates uh, is the uh, radical feminism. So the advocacy is the patriarch patriarchy in the society was abolished. Uh, the cause of all inequalities in the society is based on gender identity class, perceived attractiveness, sexual orientation, and ability, and then women's liberation movement. So that's the advocacy. And next is the, uh, the advocates, which is the equality feminism. So Mary Wollstonecraft and John Stuart Mill. So equal, uh, the advocacy is equal treatment of male and female sexes. Women should enjoy all the legal as well as political rights, similar to men as they are human beings. Next is the, uh, the, under the advocates is the Amazon feminism. So the Amazon feminism, uh, female physical, uh, the ad advocacy female physical power as a means to achieve the goal of gender equality. Kumbaga, it's a sort of women empowerment or girl power. And then for the advocates, next is the post-colonial feminism. So the advocacy deals with the topics like racism, colonialism and its cultural, economic, and political effects on the society that explore some particular gender realities of non-white and non-Western women. And next is the, under the advocates, is the Marxist femini feminism. So Marxist feminism, the advocacy is the, the dismantling of capitalism as a way of liberating women was given focus. Women should be given freedom to work and should get equal wages for their work at the workplace. So the same salary. And next, for under the advocates, is the cyber feminism. So cyber feminism, the year 1980s and the year 1990s. Uh, yes. So sets of pra uh, the advocacy sets of practices that deal with feminist interactions and acts in cyberspace. Women's use of new information and communication technologies for their upliftment. And last, uh, I, uh, for, the, for the advocates, individualist feminism. So the advocacy uh, emphasizes on the transformation of the legal system in order to eliminate the inequality. Freedom of an individual over the private property on the basis of equality. Okay, now under the... Uh, under the the advocates, so lesbian feminism, the year 1970s and 1980s. So the advocacy deals with the issues related to lesbian and women in the society. Society is structured to serve heterosexual needs. Lesbian within the Women's Liber Liberation, Liberation Movement or the WLM, feminist lesbian politics and lesbians in the Gay Liberation Front or GLF.
So that's uh, lesbian feminism, uh, Sheila Jeffrey. And next to advocates is the separatist, the separatist feminism. So Marilyn Frace. So the advocacy is feminism enables women to take interest in other women, creates new space and dialogue in women's relationship, and limits them from dealing with men. And the advoc advocates echo feminism the, the year 1974 from Choice D. Ibuan. Ibuan. So uh, the advocacy is social and political movement that deals with the existence of environmentalism and feminism, changing the attitudes of the society towards productivity and activity of both women and nature. And the advocates different, different feminism on the year 19th century, uh, Michael M. Smasher. So the advocacy deals with the differences between the sexes such as biological, emotional, sociological or spiritual so feminism that reverse gender polarity that is women are superior to men integral gender complementary discusses that when men and women are integrated and then the last but not the least under the advocates is the black feminism so it was uh, 1974 patricia hill collins so the advocacy of this is the liberation of black women from all oppressions Women's liberation as a strategy that unites women, men, and children in which women have to struggle against injustice because of oppression. So gender inequality, meaning uh, they have not the same, uh, the same treatment, the same rights. So that is gender inequality. So... As you can see, uh, uh, men or uh, there is a domination between the male and the female. So gender ideology and gender inequality. To the feminist normative view of gender ideology can base that women are viewed as inferior to men in a system of society dominated by men. So according to International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences 2001, gender ideology described as masculine and feminine behaviors and social roles. The normative meaning of gender ideology needs to have distinction from biological sex, association, and behavioral gender orientation. So these two concepts are understood differently based on the meaning attached to it by the Person. So when we are talking about sex, it's um, male and female. Gender, uh, that's the sexuality, orientation. So concept are uh, based on the meaning attached to it by the person. On the other hand, gender inequality for feminism focus on the rights and freedoms for women and girls of all ages in the society. Feminist groups claim that human rights stay inherent is traditional bias in favor of men and boys. The concept of women's rights not only focus on marital, parental, and religious rights, but also to enter the legal construct, contracts, own property, right to suffrage, be educated, hold public office, fair wages, and equal work opportunities for women. So that's all for today, class. Thank you for having your time with me. I hope you've understand our lesson for this morning. So thank you. And once again, this is Rafi G. Aguilar, your teacher in the disciplines and ideas in the social science. Keep safe, everyone. Bye.